Over the past couple of weeks, several black and Hispanic girls have gone missing in the nation's capital. A few of them have been found, but the majority are still missing. This news has garnered little attention, so we've made it here our top story tonight. Some say the news coverage would be different if the girls were white. At this time, lawmakers are now calling on the FBI to help find them. Here's RT correspondent Ashley Banks with more on the developing story. In a matter of two weeks, close to 20 black and Latino girls went missing here in the District of Columbia. Now, it gained little to no attention from the media. Some of the girls have returned home. However, the majority are still missing. According to an academic study, it showed that 20% of all cases of missing black girls are actually reported in the news. The D.C. police commander, Chanel Dickerson, has said most teens who go missing are leaving home voluntarily. According to her, the teens return home on their own or are located shortly after. According to the Metro Metropolitan Police Department, missing persons cases have been declining in D.C. There were 708 missing persons cases at the start of the year, and 674 of those have been resolved. Many speculate these girls fell victim to human trafficking. However, the MPD says there has not been an uptick in human trafficking and believes this is not the case. And the department also said social media has been the primary platform for disseminating news about missing persons cases, giving an explanation as to why few people heard of these missing girls until now or why it may seem like there's an uptick in missing black and Latino girls in D.C. Now, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser has said there isn't a connection between the missing girls and human trafficking. Bowser held a Facebook Live presser with Commander Dickerson. Here's what Commander Dickerson said. We have received a lot of media attention and a lot of concerns from the public because of the number of releases. There have been concerns that young girls in the District of Columbia are um, victims of, of human trafficking or have been kidnapped. Um, or oh, and there's an increase in the number. And I say um, this without minimizing the number of missing persons in D.C. because one missing person is one person too many. But there's actually been a decrease. And sadly, a large number of um, our missing girls um, return, maybe not voluntarily, and return within a short period of time. Many people have taken to Twitter using the hashtag missing DC girls to voice their concern. So a bunch of little girls have gone missing and we're finding out on social media instead of news networks. All these young black girls missing in DC, something is not right and the MPD needs to be investigated. Welcome to America, where we use the FBI to find a football jersey, but can't even get an Amber Alerts for the missing DC girls. This person was referring to Tom Brady's stolen jersey that was returned to his team by the FBI. Lawmakers are now calling on the FBI to use their time wisely and look for the missing black and Latino girls. They are asking Attorney General Jeff Sessions and FBI Director James Comey to devote the resources necessary to determine whether these developments are an anomaly or whether they are indicative of an underlying trend that must be addressed. Many are questioning whether if these girls were white, would things be handled differently? In Washington, Ashley Banks, RT. And joining us now, Sharice Crawford, the Advisory Neighborhood Commissioner in Ward 8 for Southeast Washington, D.C. Sharice, thank you so much for being here. And I'm wanting to know in your community, what's been the reaction to this news coming out in the past couple of weeks? Uh, thank you so much for having me on and thank you for talking about this very important subject. Uh, the reaction has been uh, that of outrage. Um, we have we held a press conference uh, this past uh, Wednesday evening, and it was a large turnout. Uh, the challenge has been that we have not had a, a conversation of this magnitude on that platform, uh, if I can recall, in a very long time. Um, and so we are looking for resolutions. Mm -hmm. uh, we introduced resolutions from my office to the mayor's office, to city council. Uh, we introduced the resolution that we've also sent this to both Senate and, and Congress. Again, looking for resources that can, one, help us to keep our MPD website updated and accurate. Uh, the question that you asked me at the beginning of the segment is the question that everybody's been asking. What's the total number? Mm -hmm. Is this accurate? Is that accurate? And so social media has created a trend where 
there are a lot of numbers floating around right. and we're trying to get the accurate number of those individuals and so we are asking that they identify someone that can be full time with focusing solely on updating the number of missing persons mm -hmm. and to focus on those that are actually missing. Mm -hmm. What has what are they doing to find the families because we're looking for the families of those who are still missing. You know, what is MPD doing to locate those families and actually have those families have a voice. The fact is, is even if the police department is saying that the number of those children missing is not going up, it might even be declining. The fact of the matter is, regardless of those facts, these cases are still underreported. Why is that? Uh, I think that, that, not think, but what's happening is that they've made, they've, they've made this correlation to the missing persons, as if the missing person case is not as valid as, a, a missing person, as the, the, the runaway, rather, is not as valid as the missing person. When in re reality, if they're missing, you don't know if they are a runaway or if they've been taken. Mm -hmm. So I think we, we've been advising that to take every case of missing person as seriously, regardless of what previous cases have told you that these, there have been previous runaways, and that requires another set of solutions. And then there are those who are absolutely missing still to this day. We hear about the Amber Alert, and there are specific strict criteria that yeah. go along with issuing an Amber Alert, and that really comes down to an abduction, a known abduction of a juvenile. Would there be a proposal, perhaps, where we might be doing something similar to an Amber Alert, but with different criteria so we can get this information out as soon as someone goes missing? It's actually it's funny you would say that because that is actually number uh, number five on our resolution uh, to to change or to, to modify the criteria to receive an Amber Alert so that every person, that young person, is qualified for an Amber Alert. And if we cannot do that on a national level, then that needs to be done on a local level. We have not received, I have not received an Amber Alert in years. Yeah. And, and those who are my constituents have not either. And so, yes, it's one thing to have a criteria, but it's another thing to, to try to enforce that criteria as if, if, it, as if that makes us comfortable mm -hmm. that there's a criteria instead of trying to look for how we can modify the criteria to get the Amber Alerts out and, and folks notified. Here in D.C., the knowledge and understanding of how big of a problem this really is when it comes to our minority girls in this community is because D.C. police started publishing these missing person notifications on social media and people started saying, oh my goodness, all of these girls are missing. What is going on? Um, did that just add to the hysteria? Is this the proper way to be handling it? Are you happy with the police department's response trying to raise awareness on social media? So absolutely. I, I have thank Commander Dickerson for bringing this to awareness, uh, but I didn't find out from Commander Dickerson's awareness mission. I found out from constituents who were emailing, calling, uh, sending messages via social media and Instagram and on my on my Facebook page. Mm. And so I started to do an independent investigation. Um, and then as a Tuesday of last week, we went to the website and it had not been updated in three years. Wow. There was one person on the website and that was Relisha Rudd. And so I did reach out to the chief and the commander and I said, if you're going to be, you know, promoting information, there should be a source where people can go back to check validity. Well, and we'll, so keep, from we'll Tuesday, keep looking into that. Uh, we have to leave it there. Thank you so yeah. much, Sharice Crawford, Advisory Neighborhood Commissioner, Ward 8 for Southeast Washington, D.C. Good luck with all of your efforts trying to bring more attention to this issue. Thank you so much.